1950s, a visit to Victoria Coach Station any day of the week would have been rewarded with the sight of gleaming South Down coaches. The sparkling condition of South Down's vehicles is legendary. Every vehicle looked as though it had just been polished. Londoners must have fond memories of stopping at South Downs Crawley coach station for refreshments and then continuing their journey to the south coast on a gleaming coach such as this beetle body Tiger Cub. from London, the coach would have gone straight through the wash to preserve that South Down sparkle. Southdown always had an entry in the Brighton Coach Rally, where they usually won a prize or two. Leyland Royal Tiger was a typical prize winning entry in 1956. Preservationists were unusual enough in those days to catch the attention of the newsreels. Although the Southdown fleet was extremely varied, Leyland had been their main supplier of chassis since the early 1930s. The variety was added to during the war years when the government allocated available buses to operators. These post-war guys were later added to the 100 utility guy Arabs, which had been delivered between 1943 and 46. Some of the utility guys were later converted to open top for the seafront service and lasted well into the 1960s. Southdown's experience with the guys must have been favourable, as 12 more with Northern Counties bodies were added to the fleet in the late 1940s. A further 48 guys with Park Royal bodies arrived during 1955 and 6.
Brighton area, Southdown had competition from Brighton Hoven district, which was really two operators using the same fleet name. The ACs and Leylands belonged to the corporation, while the BH and D company had Bristol's. As in most seaside towns of the 1950s, the oldest buses in the fleet could often be found converted to open top for the seafront service. The trolleybus fleet was more confusing, as both operators used the same type of vehicle. The only easy way to tell the difference was by the registration number. The vehicles registered in Brighton by the corporation always had UF lettering, while the company buses registered outside Brighton did not. Trolleybuses were AC 661T chassis with Wayman bodies which were easily recognisable by their flared bottoms.
trolley bus operation in Brighton ended in mid-1961. Further along the coast in Eastbourne, Southdown again had competition from a local corporation. Another operator of AECs and Leylands. Once again, the oldest examples in the fleet could often be found on the seafront service. Southdown's fleet of Leylands contained many rebody pre-war chassis with bodies by various builders including Northern Counties, Park Royal, East Lanx and Beadle. Between 1951 and 57, over 100 Leyland PD-212s were added to the fleet. The first 54 had Leyland bodies based on the standard Farrington type, but with Southdown's continued preference for half-drop windows. After Leyland stopped building bus bodies in 1954, chassis were bodied by Northern Counties, Park Royal and Beadle, albeit to a Park Royal design. The new Leylands could usually be found on the long run from Brighton to Portsmouth. Platform doors became standard from 1952. the most distinctive body styles among the rebodied buses were these curvaceous examples from northern counties. The Punk Royal rebuilds were basically to the builder's metal frame standard of the time. to any Southdown garage would always reveal a variety of Leylands. Bodied Tiger Cubs joined the fleet between 1955 and 58. Ten Dennis Falcons with Dennis bodies were added to the fleet in the late 1940s. They were similar to the two centre entrance Harrington bodied Falcons which had been bought for the Tramocar service in 1939.
and service to Hailing Island, where lightweight buses were essential to cross this weak bridge. They worked alongside other lightweight vehicles, including Leyland Cheetahs and Cubs. of the two original centre entrance buses from the Tramo car service. Sometime in the mid-1950s, Southdown Enthusiast Club members were able to enjoy a tour with this Leyland Cub. is from a batch that was new in the late 1940s. They were rebuilt by Beadle with full fronts during 1954 and 5. This modernised their appearance, but removing the front bulkhead from a half-cab bus couldn't have given passengers a very quiet ride. In Portsmouth, Southdown again had trolley buses to compete with. There had been rivalry between Southdown and Portsmouth Corporation since the days of Frank Bartlett, Southdown's agent in the town during the 1920s. It had been the practice to send all spare buses arriving in Bognor and Worthing onto Portsmouth, where the enterprising Frank loaded them up with day returns to Bognor at five shillings a head. The corporation didn't like all this extra traffic being created by Southdown and originally had a minimum sixpenny fare imposed within the town's boundaries. By the 1930s, Southdown's fares were a more reasonable penny or tuppence more than the corporation's. This actually worked in Southdown's favour, as it stopped long-distance buses from being filled up by local passengers. Portsmouth Corporation tested six different types of trolley bus in 1934. In 1935, nine AEC 661Ts were purchased with English electric 50-seat bodies. 66 more followed later in the year, and were followed by another 10 in 1937. Many of them lasted until the system closed in 1963.
signs of an even earlier form of electric traction remained in Portsmouth for many years. had not been a great builder of bus stations, but several were built during the 1950s. This one is in Chichester. platform doors used by Southdown can be clearly seen in this shot. Southdown bus routes encompassed a large chunk of southern England, from beyond Portsmouth in the west and Eastbourne in the east, to its northern borders in Horsham and East Grinstead. In Horsham, Southdown met up with London Transport's country bus services. buses for Omo work were delivered in 1954 with 39 seat bodies built by Nod Brothers which by then was part of Dupal. Southdown was one of the first British bus operators to adopt one-man operation of full-sized single-deckers. in the 1950s was a real mecca for buses. This scene has sadly very much faded into history.
Some of these Leyland Royal Tigers, dating from 1952, were later rebuilt to front entrance layout for one-man operation. Another historic scene, this time in Uckfield. garage was one of several similar buildings. still has its bus station, even if the classic buses have all gone.